everyone, welcome. This is the eighth edition of or episode of Learning with Human Kinetics. My name is Aaron. I'm a personal trainer and sports performance coach. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about muscle fibers. Now, I know that might not sound like the most interesting topic to discuss, uh, but I assure you that it's much more interesting and important than you think. So if you watched uh, you know, a sports game or match on TV or listened to a sports talk show, you've probably heard an athlete referred to as being twitchy. Now, what does that even mean? Uh, it's become sort of a buzzword in sports, but it's also science, so we're gonna talk about it today. Uh, have you ever wondered why some people are fast, uh, fast and explosive and others aren't quite as quick as maybe they would like to be? Or what about people who uh, have the endurance to run a marathon? It comes easily for some, but not everyone can last that long without uh, proper training. What about power athletes who also have mid-level endurance? How does that work? Now, the most direct way to explain the differences in types of athletes might be with track and field. An endurance track athlete uh, would be one who runs like a 1600 meter or a 3200 meter race, or if we're talking about college, maybe a 5K or 10K. Uh, a power athlete in track, uh, track and field might be one who competes in a race like the 100 meter or 200 meter dash, or a high jumper or long jumper, or an athlete who does throws like a shot put or discus. Now, an example of a power athlete outside of track and field might be an Olympic lifter or an American football player or a volleyball player. Think about what is required to be great in one of those sports. Um, you have to be strong, very powerful, and fast. An Olympic lifter uh, would probably struggle a little bit on a clean if, or a snatch if they weren't powerful. The same goes for a football player. If a lineman isn't fast and powerful, they'd probably get handled pretty easily on the line every play. They have to train to get stronger and train their muscles to respond powerfully. Uh, there is some crossover between power and endurance sports like soccer or boxing or maybe even tennis, but back to the track example, we might be looking at an 800 meter runner uh, to see that crossover. Now in order to explain why some athletes are better at some events, we have to look at muscle fibers. Skeletal muscles are composed of fibers that have different physiological characteristics and those characteristics help define them as either slow twitch or fast twitch. Now, slow twitch muscle fibers are more specifically called type 1 muscle fibers. Slow twitch motor units develop force and relax slowly. They have a long twitch time and generally uh, efficient and fatigue resistant. Uh, think of the example of the distance runner. Now, those athletes are going to be able to last or endure a long time, so they need muscle fibers that are resistant to fatigue. Have you ever seen a sprinter try to run a mile? If you can talk them into doing it in the first place, they're probably going to struggle. Now, distance runners are able to uh, do it because of their slow twitch muscle fibers. Uh, they have the capa high capacity for aerobic energy supply. At the same time, they have limited potential for rapid force development. That's because they have low anaerobic power. Now, just as a sprinter would struggle running a mile, a distance runner would probably, uh, probably isn't gonna to be too fast and would get burned off the starting line on a 100 meter or 200 meter dash. Now, what does all this mean for aerobic or endurance athletes? Slow twitch or type one muscle fibers are fatigue resistant, uh, have slow or long twitch time and a high capacity for aerobic energy supply. So it makes sense that these muscle fibers um, are perfect for endurance athletes or exercise. Uh, some of the distinguishing characteristics of slow twitch or type 1 muscle fibers are small uh, motor neuron size, low recruitment threshold, uh, slow contraction speed, slow uh, relaxation speed, high level of endurance, uh, high resistance to fatigue, and low production force and low power output. Now let's back up just a little bit and explain what a motor unit is. A motor unit is the motor neuron and the muscle fibers that innervates or stimulates. All muscle fibers of a motor unit contract together when they are stimulated by a motor neuron. Now when a motor neuron fires an impulse, all the corresponding muscle fibers are simultaneously activated and develop force. All the muscle fibers of a motor unit contract and develop force at the same time. Now, this is known as the all or nothing principle. In other words, you can't have only a few muscle fibers fire or contract within the same motor unit. They either all contract or none of them contract. Each impulse results in a short period of activation of muscle fibers within the motor unit 
and that is what is referred to as a twitch. If there's a second twitch from a motor uh, nerve before the muscle's uh, fibers completely relax, the force from the two twitches results in a force that is greater than the force produced by a single twitch. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Two twitches are going to be more powerful than one. Um, decreasing the time between t twitches results in a greater force. This helps explain the difference between fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. Now, the ability to vary force is essential uh, for performance. Muscular force can be graded in two ways. One way is through variation in the frequency of the motor units uh, that are activated. If the motor unit is activated once, there won't be a lot of force produced. But if the frequency of activation is increased, the twitches will overlap, resulting in a greater force being developed by the motor unit. Now, the type of motor unit uh, recruited is determined by its physiological characteristics. Uh, take the example of the distance runner. Slow twitch or type 1 motor units are engaged uh, to take advantage of their efficiency, uh, endurance capacity, and resistance to fatigue. Fast twitch motor units can still be recruited when needed, for example, um, in a final kick at the end of a race, but that level of intensity can't be sustained for a long period of time. So I've already explained a little bit about uh, what fast twitch muscle fibers are. These are more specifically referred to as type 2 muscle fibers. A fast twitch motor unit uh, is one that develops force and also relaxes rapidly. This means it has a short uh, twitch time, or like the name suggests, they are fast twitch. These are essentially the opposite of type 1 motor units. Now you can probably see where this is going. If a fast twitch or a type 2 fiber um, are the opposite of type 1, that means that they are characterized as inefficient and fatigable and have low aerobic power. Uh, they instead have rapid force development and high anaerobic power. Now, fast twitch fibers are a little more complex than slow twitch. While there's only one type of slow twitch muscle fiber, there are two type 2 fibers. Uh, these are labeled as type 2A and type 2X. These muscle fibers differ primarily in their capacity for um, aerobic oxidative energy supply. Type 2A fibers have greater capacity for aerobic metabolism and have more capillaries surrounding them uh, than type 2X. This means they have a greater resistance to fatigue uh, compared to type 2X fibers. Now, characteristics that define uh, type 2 muscle fibers are large motor neuron size, uh, high recruitment threshold, uh, fast contraction speed, fast relaxation speed, intermediate to low endurance, uh, intermediate to high power output, high anaerobic enzy enzyme content, um, among others. So you can see the difference. Uh, slow twitch fibers have slow contraction speed and slow relaxation speed compared to fast twitch fibers, which have a fast contraction speed and fast relaxation speed. This is what helps create a more powerful twitch, uh, to say it simply, uh, like I mentioned earlier, when the fast twitches essentially overlap because of the uh, fast contraction and relaxation speed. Now, while both type 2A and type 2X muscle fibers are considered fast twitch, uh, there are some differences. For example, type 2A fibers are associated with intermediate endurance, while type 2X provide a low level of endurance. Uh, likewise, type 2X fibers have a higher power output than type 2A fibers. Uh, this is where some of the crossover might occur. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it is possible for a runner to utilize type 1 or slow twitch muscle fibers uh, to run a 1600 meter race and then recruit type 2 fibers for the final kick. Now, while impressive, that presents a different explanation um, than what is found in the type 2A muscle fibers. Type 2A muscle fibers uh, are the muscle fibers most likely to allow an athlete to cross over or find that middle ground uh, between endurance and power. Now these athletes would be able to potentially have fast sprint times in the 200 meter and also uh, the endurance to stay competitive in say an 800 meter race. This is because of the force that type 2A muscle fibers are able to produce uh, combined with their fatigue resistant characteristics. On the other hand, uh, type 2X muscle fibers have the highest power output of the three types uh, but have the lowest level of endurance. Because of the nature of certain sports, uh, it's difficult to label activity as, as solely type 1 or type 2 recruitment activities. 
um, events that use both type one and type two muscle fiber recruitment in addition to the 800 meter um, might be soccer, uh, sports like lacrosse, hockey, uh, boxing, wrestling, tennis, uh, speed skating, maybe rowing. Um, think about a soccer match, for example. A soccer match, depending on the level, uh, will last about 90 minutes. Now, this takes a lot of endurance, and it is understandable that type uh, 1 or slow twitch fibers will be recruited. But there are also points in the match where uh, maybe an all-out sprint might be necessary. And this is where type 2 or fast twitch muscle fibers would need to be utilized. Uh, tennis is another example of a sport where uh, a single match could last three to four hours. A high level competitive tennis athlete uh, would need to resist fatigue as long as possible in order to last the entire match. Um, at, but at the same time, tennis is a very powerful sport that requires a lot of powerful movements in short bursts. So it would make sense that uh, type two or fast switch muscle fibers would be needed uh, for the athlete to stay powerful throughout the match. Now the question is, can these qualities be trained um, or changed? Now some studies have indicated that heavy resistance training performed at slow speeds produces um, a shift from type 2X and type 2X and type 2A hybrids uh, to a more pure type uh, 2A phenotype and less of a shift in pure type 1 muscle fibers. That might not sound like a big deal unless the goal of training is to produce power outputs uh, at the level of type 2X muscle fibers. Now, power training performed at faster speeds shows less of a loss of type 2X and uh, 2X and 2A hybrid fibers and a decrease in type 1 fibers um, to a faster phenotype. Another study compared changes in uh, fiber type characteristics following a mix of ballistic and plyometric training along with uh, strength training compared to maximal strength training. Now the findings of this one showed that the group that performed six weeks of strength training uh, experienced a shift to more type 2A phenotype uh, from type 2X with no change at all in type 1 muscle fibers. Now the combination training, however, did not show a loss in type 2X fibers, but showed an increase in type 2A fibers and a loss in type 1 muscle fibers. Um, now sometimes the best evidence is anecdotal. Um, there have been many cases where a relatively slow, untrained athlete is able to get more powerful in his or her sport. Um, and some have been stretched out to become more endurance athletes, tapping into their type 1 muscle fibers. Uh, with a mix of training, uh, like I suggested earlier, it is possible to train for the recruitment of type 2A fibers. Now, these athletes have the potential become, to really become you know, the best and most diverse athletes on their teams. For example, uh, there are many cases of track athletes who might run the anchor in the 4x100 uh, relay team, but also have a fast 800 meter uh, race time. Now, where training or sometimes a detraining effect might occur is an example of a basketball player, and I've seen this. Uh, basketball players, you know, train to be strong and quick and explosive and powerful. And I've seen cases where a basketball player might train an entire summer uh, to get ready for the winter basketball season and they make great progress, but then they decide to run cross country in the fall and essentially lose all the gains that they made from their off season training. Now, whether you're watching sports on TV or in person or uh, you're competing, you can generally pick out which athletes are utilizing fast twitch or slow twitch muscle fibers. Um, there should also be a level of respect, I think, for athletes who might be you know, more naturally geared towards sports that require slow twitch muscle fibers, uh, but train to get faster and more powerful. I see it daily again, um, more so to the, on the end of the athletes that want to get faster and more powerful in their sport. Um, I don't think I've ever seen or had a parent uh, bring their athlete in to train and say, I want my kid to be slower. You know, unless you're training specifically for an endurance uh, event, uh, everyone generally wants to be faster and more explosive. And if that doesn't come naturally for you, then you have to train to get there. So again, just keep all this in mind when you're training. Um, I hope this insight helps better understand how athletes are different and why some are better at certain activities than others. Um, maybe it gives you ideas of how to you know, change up your own training so that you can improve in uh, the areas that you want to be better. Um, for additional resources on this, 
You can check out uh, the NFCA's Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning. And don't forget uh, about our journals page where you can gain access to research studies and more at journals.humankinetics.com. So again, thank you for joining me today for this talk on fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. Um, I appreciate you uh, spending the time with me. And until next time, be well.